Hey guys, MD here from Nightwalker Lab. So in this workshop, we charge a lot of stuff. Camera batteries, video lights, power banks, gimbals. At any given time, there's probably 10 to 15 devices plugged in somewhere around here charging. And when you're going through that many charging cycles, you learn which chargers hold up and which ones don't. So I've had chargers overheat, I've had ports stop working, and one time I had a charger actually catch fire right here in this workshop. It was isolated, we caught it, nothing serious happened, but ever since then, I've been very careful about charging gear. It needs to be fast, safe and compact because we bring all of this stuff out for road shows and events. So these are 140 watt gun chargers for when you are near an outlet and these are 165 watt power banks, charge and anchor. Right, two of the hottest brands today. So the thing that makes all four of these different from regular chargers and power banks are the display. Real time monitoring displays that show you exactly what's happening with your power, not just an LED indicator like this one here for dots, right? actual information. And after using all four of these for the past two weeks, I'll share my thoughts on what each one is good at. The Charge Pixel 140, this whole thing is inspired by the Braun T3 radio from 1958. Detail RAM is Bauhaus design language. Now this is 310 grams, three USB-C ports above. Power distribution is 140 watts on one plug, 100 plus 40 for two plugs, and 100 20, 20 for three plugs. But the centerpiece is this dot matrix display on the front. It shows real-time power output. Now when you've got multiple devices plugged in, it cycles through showing each port's output. So you know exactly which port is doing what at any given time. This is way more useful than a regular charger like this with just an LED somewhere. If your laptop isn't fast charging, pulling only 30 watts instead of the actual 90, then you know there's a problem without guessing. But there's a practical limitation with this design. It's only on one side of the charger. So depending on how your outlet is oriented, you might have to plug this in this way, right? And then you would never see the display because the actual side is facing the wall. Clever part about this UK version is a removable three pin adapter here with four foldable US pins underneath. So if you travel between Singapore and US, this works in both countries. You can remove this extra adapter if you don't need it. The Anchor 140 watt 4 port is straight practical. USB-C including a USB-A at the bottom. So power distribution is 100 watt, 30, 20 and 12. Or if you're charging only from one USB port, then it's 140 watts max. The USB-A port caps out at 33 watts. Now the pins fold completely flat. So this is more compact than the Charge Pixel 140. Look at that. Very nice. And you need it, just pop it out like this again. This OLED display, it faces up instead. This solves the charge orientation problem. No matter how you plug this in, no matter what angle your outlet forces you into, the display always faces up. You can always see it. And this display shows temperature in real time. You can see it running at 24 degrees Celsius with a safe indicator. So yes, it is touch screen. So you see the little screen here, just tap here and it cycles through to the different displays. After that fire incident, I pay attention to this. I want to know if a charger is running hot or not. The Pixel 1 140 doesn't show temperature at all. For me, that's a significant difference when I'm running a high wattage charging in a workshop environment where a lot of gear is stacked up and you know, ventilation isn't always ideal. The anchor display also shows which port is pulling how much power. Similar to the charge, but the layout is more intuitive. Clear icons, logical arrangement. You understand what you're looking at immediately. At events and road shows, we are not always near power. Sometimes you're setting up on a parking lot or on location and that's where these come in. Both 165 watts with built-in retractable cables and both CCC rated for flying through to China and both have displays. This is what separates these from basic power banks that have just four LED dots showing rough battery level. The charge power bank 20,000 mAh here, rated capacity at 11,000 mAh, 460 grams, one retractable USB-C cable here and up top one USB-C port and one USB-A port. The display shows battery percentage with a visual bar graph combined with an in input output wattage and if you pass through charging, it will show pass through on the screen as well. At a glance, I know exactly how hard I'm pushing the power bank. There's a settings menu that also shows way more detail in this list form here. Uh, last charge level, uh, max capacity, battery cycles, temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit, and total output in watt hours. You can also control screen brightness and display timeout. So if you want the screen to stay on longer while you're actively using it, you can set that. Or dim it at night if it's too bright. There's also a language selector at the end. And every time you press the button, it forces you to cycle through every screen until it goes back to the main screen. Now, a side note, I've been a UI UX designer for a good 10 years, so this annoys me greatly. Why do you keep asking me to select uh, my language every time I toggle the screen? 
The Anchor Power Bank 25,000 mAh, rated capacity is at 16,000 mAh, it's 548 grams, so heavier than the charge. One retractable USB-C cable on the side, and on the side, one USB-C port and one USB-A port. They do have a lanyard here that doubles as an extra USB-C cable. More brands are doing this just like the Ice Mac 3. It also comes in a nice uh, carry pouch like this. The OLED display shows battery percentage but the key difference is individual port wattage charging on the main screen here. So you can see exactly which port is pulling how much power at any given time. C1, C2 and C3. And if the port is not in use, it is grayed out. All visible simultaneously. You can walk past and immediately see if your laptop is fast charging or if it's dropped to a trickle charging. You can see if a device isn't charging when it should be. Press the button and it cycles through additional screen showing temperature with a safe indicator. Uh, battery health as percentage and cycle counts. Knowing battery health and cycle counts is valuable for professional use. After a year of heavy event use, I would want to know if this power bank is at 100% health or is degraded to 85%. That tells me when I need to replace it before it fails at an important event. Now the anchors is just easier to read. Clear icons, logical layout, you understand what you're looking at immediately. The individual port breakdown on the main screen is particularly helpful. I like this over the charge list version. Now pro tip, the actual usable capacity is not the one on the box, right? Look for rated capacity that takes into account efficiency loss when charging. Now the Anchor with 16,000 mAh rated capacity will charge a MacBook Pro 16 inch about one and a half times or an iPhone about four times. The Charge with its 11,000 mAh rated will charge that same MacBook about once or an iPhone let's say three times. If you need maximum runtime, the Anchor wins because naturally this is advertised as a 25,000 mAh this is advertised as 20,000 mAh. Yeah. Also, there's a cost difference. But the charge is 90 grams lighter, so when you're carrying gear all day, that might add up. So I've been testing both at events and in the workshop. Both perform well, both hit their claim wattages. I used the charge to charge a MacBook Pro and iPhone simultaneously. The MacBook pulled about 67 watts, which is correct. The iPhone pulled about 20. For workshop use, I'm using the Anchor charger here. Temperature display for safety monitoring. Always visible screen, regardless of your outlet orientation, and USB-A port for older gear which I do have. If you fly between Singapore and US regularly, the charge charger wins on the adapter flexibility alone. So that's one last thing to pack. The big takeaway, these displays are what makes all four of these worth considering over regular chargers and power banks. The real-time monitoring, temperature data, battery health, individual port breakdown. This is information that actually helps you use your gear better and safer. So links to all four are below. Let me know which one you actually use. What's your favorite brands? Are, are there any out there that I've missed out? Alright, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. I'm just signing out.